I was around 10 years old when this happened. Me and my two best friends and our parents were on a long vacation in Turkey in a very good and safe hotel. One night, me and my two best friends who I'll call Team and Phil for this video, were staying at Team's room in the hotel while our parents were in the hotel restaurant. The room wasn't bad, actually all of our rooms seemed safe, at least we thought it was. We were having a lot of fun watching Simpsons and playing Monopoly, but what happened that night still makes me have chills. So it was around 1 a.m. and our parents were late. Phil looked at them through the window and said, They're still in that stupid restaurant. Yeah, they told us they'll come back until 11 p.m. I answered. Um, guys? Someone is knocking on the door, Tim said. It's probably just room service, Phil said. Um, can we... Can we not open the door? I said. I was pretty scared in that situation. I was only 10 and my friends were only 2 and 3 years older than me. So we were all pretty much defenseless children in the room. Tim, who was the oldest, answered. Oh, come on, it's just room service. The guy on the other side of the door said, Hello, can you please open the door? When he said that, we were all scared. In a couple of minutes of silence, he said in a louder voice, Open the goddamn door! I started crying because I knew he was in room service, because if he was, he would have talked in Turkish. I was in shock as in that moment I realized that this strange guy is using a fake ID card to open the door. Tim grabbed both of us and we ran to the bathroom and locked the door. Luckily, the guy wasn't fast to get us. He was screaming to open the door. I said, look, a phone. Luckily, Tim's mom left her phone so we could call her if we needed anything. So Phil grabbed the phone and called his dad and told him the situation and they came up to find the guy nowhere. They thought we were lying to them until the hotel manager showed them the footage. We found out that the man was stalking us and a couple other children. In a couple of days, police had finally caught him. He was a serial rapist and a pedophile. We were just lucky he wasn't fast to get us. I will never forget that night, as that was the worst day of my life. When I was 15, my mother went out shopping and left me in charge of the house. It was starting to get dark and I realized my little brother was nowhere to be found. I asked my sister if she knew where he was and she said he had gone to the park around the corner to kick his soccer ball around. I told her to watch the house while I was gone and ran off to the direction of the park. When I got there, I was surprised to find the park completely empty. I called out my brother's name but there was no answer. I started to get worried and all of a sudden I heard a faint muffled noise coming from my left. I turned just in time to see a tall figure disappearing behind a large fence. I sprinted as fast as I could and when I came around to the other side of the fence, I saw something that almost made me choke in horror. My little brother was being dragged down the alleyway by a tall man. I flew into a rage and tears of anger streamed down my face. I ran at him and he must have heard me coming because he turned around to face me and he dropped my younger brother. The tall man tried to grab me but I was running at him so fast that when I slammed into him it knocked him off his feet. He swore and tried to get back up but I just started stomping on his face. Without stopping to ask questions, I picked my brother up and ran as fast as I could back to our house. By this time it was pitch black outside and my mother was home. She was frantic with worry, and when she saw the look on our face, she realized that something bad had happened. As I explained, my brother and I started crying, and my mom gave us both the biggest hug ever, and she cried with us. Eventually, the police were called, but this guy was never found. This story takes place when I was a junior high school student. 
one morning during summer vacation. After my father went to work, my mother and I decided to visit my maternal grandmother, who lived in a rural area. Since my grandmother's house was located in the countryside, getting there required making a left turn, then driving for five minutes through a narrow, one-car-wide, unpaved road. There were rice fields and forest on the sides of the unpaved road. As soon as we arrived, I greeted my grandmother, then went into my youngest uncle's room. I used to like visiting my grandmother's house because my uncle was a huge gaming fan and his computer was much better than mine at home. So once I confirmed my uncle was at work, I turned on his computer and started playing Doom 3 which used to be the most popular game once upon a time. After playing the game for about an hour or two, my uncle returned from work. Upon his arrival, my grandmother asked him to take her grocery shopping, since my mother, my aunt, and I were visiting her house. So at about 7 p.m., they all drove to town to do some grocery shopping. I was super excited and waved goodbye to them. Since I think it is unnecessary to explain why I was excited, I'll just leave it. After enjoying about 90 minutes of free time, my uncle called. He said he was about to turn left on the road, but one of the front wheels was punctured and asked me to bring him a new tire which was in the storage shed. As I said before, after making that left turn, it took about five minutes to drive through a narrow, unpaved single-lane road to see my grandmother's house, but it took about 20 to 30 minutes on foot. Now that I think about it, it was quite scary to walk on that road, especially at night. It had no street lights and was surrounded by rice fields and forest. It was almost 9 p.m., and that area got quite dark at about 8 because it was in the country. So to be honest, I was really scared, but not wanting anyone to know I was a coward, I decided to go. I grabbed the tire, left the house, and started walking along the unpaved road. I could see my uncle shining his car's headlights toward me. That said, he was still quite far away from me, and the headlights looked like two big yellow dots. I was a bit relieved knowing my uncle and family were on the other end of this road, but the night was dark, which deepened my fear. You know, when you walk in the darkness, your eyes adjust and you start to see unclear shapes. I felt like I could see someone standing in the rice field and someone sitting down, resting his chin on his hands and looking at me through the bushes. I broke out in a cold sweat and held my legs to keep them from shaking. It felt scarier than being alone on a pitch dark night, and because of the fear and the delusion I had created, I remember feeling really dizzy. After walking for about 20 minutes, I looked towards my uncle's car and realized I was nearly there. Feeling happier, I rolled the tire faster. I rushed to hand over the tire to him as soon as possible but saw something in front of me. I wasn't sure what it was because it was still a bit away from me, but it was something dark. Suddenly, I felt strange and slowed down. Since I wanted to determine what it was while still having some distance, I strained my head and neck trying to look carefully, but it was too dark. Although I was scared, I started to walk again thinking, Nothing is going to happen because I have my uncle and family about 300 meters away. But when I got closer to it, I stopped because it became clearly visible. It was an old woman squatting with her mouth open, looking at the rice fields. I could only see the side of her face, but my whole body shivered because her blank facial expression with her mouth open was now clearly visible in the darkness. Without realizing it, I walked really close to the old woman. For reasons I don't understand, walking by without saying anything seemed even scarier, so I started talking to her. With a frightened voice, I asked, 
Excuse me, what are you doing here at night? But she did not respond and kept looking at the rice field. On the verge of crying, I shouted, Excuse me! She then looked at me and I felt my heart tightening. Even though it was dark, I could clearly see she had permed white hair and I could only see the white parts of her eyes. The scariest thing were the huge wrinkles and stains covering her face and her wide open mouth. I felt strange, like I was going crazy while looking at her. I had eye contact, but was looking down while she was looking up at me. After a few moments of eye contact, she turned her body toward me. Oh my gosh, I thought she was sitting down, but realized she had no lower body. She only had a torso and head which was supported from the ground with two arms. A flood of thoughts crossed my mind, but I remember thinking, there is Satan right in front of me. I felt like she was going to run into me with her two arms if I didn't move, so I grabbed the tire on my arms and sprinted with my eyes closed tightly. Without remembering how long I'd been running, I suddenly felt relieved. It was the next morning, and I was in my grandmother's room. When I asked my mother what happened, she said she was waiting for me in the car and saw me sprinting with my head down, holding the tire in my arms, and suddenly fell off the road, causing my family to come out of the car shocked. After listening to my mother, I told her and my other family members what I went through. Thinking I had suffered a heat stroke, That evening, my grandmother made me chicken soup. My uncle told me to stop playing horror games and wouldn't let me play Doom 3 anymore. From then on, I could only play a Star Wars racing game while staying at my grandmother's house. I still believe it was not a ghost that I saw that day. It was just an illusion caused by my mental weakness. About 10 years ago, my three-year-old son and I moved to a house from our apartment. It was a very old building and the inside of the house always seemed to be just a little darker and just a little colder than it should have been. Not long after we moved in, a friend of mine came to visit. The whole time we were sitting and talking, she seemed very uncomfortable. When I looked at her face, I noticed that something in the other room had caught her attention. Her eyes grew wide and she said, I have to go. I asked her what was wrong, but she refused to tell me. Her odd reaction was freaking me out, so I kept after her. On her way out the door, she finally blurted out, this house is hunted. But she wouldn't tell me what it was or what made her think so. To this day, she still refuses to tell me what she saw. About a week later, my three-year-old son casually asked me who the old lady in the bathroom was. One day, I was leaving my house for work and I got to the car and I realized I needed to run back in the house to get something. I walked into the house and as soon as I got inside, this framed photo on the wall shot off the wall. It didn't fall down. It shot horizontally away from the wall and it landed on a mosaic table with enough force to break some of the tiles off of it. I felt like whatever was in the house was pissed and that I came back in after it thought I had left for the day. After living in the house for about six months, I noticed a weird square cut into the boards on the deck. There was no handle, but I was able to pry it up the hole was just big enough to fit through and there was a ladder going down. For some reason I went down and I found myself in what looked like a homemade basement. It was basically just a room dug out of the earth with no constructed walls or stone supports or anything like that. It was very dark but I could see something over in the corner. It was a suspicious looking stone. 
it looked like one of those old headstones you see in cemeteries. Just then, some insects started jumping on me, so I got out of the basement as fast as I could and never went back. Now this is the part that affected me the most. It's also the reason we left the house. One night I was in bed laying on my stomach just about to fall asleep and I heard someone walk into my room. The footsteps came from the doorway over to my bed. I didn't realize until later that the fact that I heard the footsteps was weird because the room was carpeted. When the footsteps reached my bed, I felt someone put their hands on my back. Two hands, just gently laid flat on my back and kept me there. I assumed it was my son. What are you doing? I asked. But there was no answer. I looked up. No one was there. I got up and checked my son's bedroom and he was in bed fast asleep. We moved out soon after that and we never looked back. It was the night of Christmas Eve and I decided to take a walk while the snow was coming down. I loved to do that during the Christmas season just to see all of the beautiful decorations and lights that lit the city, which normally was quite dull and lugubrious and low key due to the small population of the city that I lived in at that time. Christmas was the time when the city came to life and I loved it. As I arrived into town, it was busy due to all of the shoppers that were picking up those last minute Christmas presents. As I glided past the Christmas carolers that stood on the side of the sidewalk singing, their voices beautifully echoing about here and there as children played nearby. Laughing and having snowball fights added more of that Christmassy feeling to the jolly atmosphere. It reminded me of that special childhood time that I had growing up as a kid. I missed that. As my eyes glanced up at the icicles that hung from the leafless trees overhead, I decided to cross the street to get me a cup of eggnog that was being sold at one of those stands. But as soon as I started to cross the street, out of nowhere came a large red pickup truck speeding past me, coming mere inches away from hitting me. I then found myself flat on my back, then being helped up to my feet by no other than Santa Claus himself, or should I say, a man dressed like him. Thank you, Santa, I said to him. He gave a little hint of a smile and nodded. Then he reached into his large red bag and pulled out a box that was wrapped beautifully in gold Christmas paper. I thanked him and headed back home. Halfway home, suddenly I heard bells in the sound of hooves pounding the pavement behind me. When I turned around, there was Santa on his sleigh with reindeer leading the way. And up they went, overhead and over the houses, vanishing quickly into the distance. I must have been a little shaken up from my fall and was hallucinating. Santa Claus? Flying reindeer? When I finally arrived home, I tossed the present under the Christmas tree and headed off to bed. Christmas morning had arrived and I was excited to see the contents of the gift that Santa had given me. I ripped open the gift as if I were a five-year-old child again, but all that was inside was a piece of paper, some sort of certificate. When I read it, the look of horror displayed on my face. It was a death certificate that was dated the night prior and it had my name on it. I dropped the box as my eyes shifted toward the mirror that hung above my fireplace. There was no reflection of me, not even a shadow. I was dead. I had been struck by that truck last night and didn't even know that I had died. 
Suddenly, there was a knock at my door, so I opened it. There stood the same Santa Claus that helped me up and gave me the present. Is this some sort of sick joke and a magical illusion? I yelled in anger at him. His mouth finally opened as his baritone and raspy voice told me that I had to come with him. He then removed his Santa suit, revealing his true identity, the Grim Reaper.